Matt's Jacks and Balls, episode number two. I'm your host, Matt Clark, and firstly, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone that watched episode one. I'm really stoked and honoured that heaps of people have watched it and reached out to me, so I've decided to keep going with a few more episodes. So as you can see today, the weather is not great, so I won't be moving around as much, but it's winter and we don't control the weather, so something's better than nothing, I suppose. So in this episode, we'll of course try and have Coach's Corner, uh, where we look at some warm-up drills. Uh, we have the introduction of two much-anticipated segments, Bar Bulls Hit and Scotty Saying. Now, due to the response, I've decided to add a little segment to the start of each show called Maddie's Mentions. Uh, this is a little segment where I show some of the comments I've received online through YouTube, Instagram and or Facebook. Now, granted, Instagram isn't up and going properly just yet as I'm waiting on some lessons on how to use it. Yes, my primary job is in IT and I get the basics of Instagram, uh, but I've never had to use it like this before, so that will be ramping up a lot more in the near future. So, to kick it off, let's go to Maddie's Mentions. So, Matt's mentions will be showcasing and replying to some of the comments made on social media. Now, first up, we have Matt Perkins from East Ivanhoe Bowls Club, who writes, Great work, Matt. Our game has needed something like your show for ages. Look forward to future shows. Thanks, Matty. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated, Matt. Um, I was thinking the same when I came up with the concept of the show. I really haven't seen a show like this around. So I had the camera, the microphone and stuff and decided why the hell not. Uh, now there's bits and pieces of clips around the place but nothing is a full blown show like this. So uh, as I said in the last episode, I'm going to get out and about a lot more uh, when the season starts and hopefully more people get to watch it and start following. Then more people want to get on board and be part of it. So we'll see what happens in the near future. Uh, next person up is Jim. Toll. Now, Jim, I hope I've pronounced that right. Uh, now, I reckon I've played against Jim before, as he looks very familiar, and I'm pretty good with faces. So, uh, Jim's comments were, uh, looking good, Matt. I can see this really taking off. Uh, now, firstly, Jim, I don't know about the looking good bit, mate. Uh, I've more got a head for radio, but unfortunately, podcasts wouldn't work all that well with this kind of stuff. So, but in terms of it taking off, look, I really hope it does. Um, I hope it gets the younger ones interested. I hope it breathes new life into the older ones as well and gets everyone excited about lawn bowls a bit more and making it more about fun. Uh, now, to finish up, I got a message from some bloke who calls himself The Wiz. Uh, I'm sure many of you know The Wiz, so I won't disclose who it is just yet um, because he's actually promised me he'd come down and be on the sh one of the future shows. So. The Wiz writes, uh, perfect first episode. At the end of showing all different things in your bag, lay them out so we can see the individual items. Now, The Wiz actually saw the pre-release of the first episodes, but I ran out of time and quite frankly, I forgot. So, um, so without further delay, let's cut over to Coach's Corner and finish it off as it should have been. So yes, we're gonna go backwards a bit, but maybe I'll be able to do this a bit more justice. So we went through my bag last episode, but we'll dive a bit deeper into the essentials. Now, first up, lawn bowls. Of course, mine are the Aero Evolves that I bought directly from Aero, and they are completely customized as explained. Now, next, you don't have to have them, but they are good value. Proper bowl shoes, mine are the Gel Shepard and Two from ASICS. Now, the smaller things that you'll definitely need for every bag. This little tube is called Grippo. This is available everywhere and helps you grip up and polish your balls. Oh, sorry, um, your ball, bowls. Can't even say it properly. Now, a bowls cloth. Mine is my grandfather Yorkies and came from the Arat VRI club. And yes, it needs a clean, but I'll do that closer to spring. Uh, I'll be getting some of these soon for mats, jacks and balls, but more on that in later episodes. Next up, marking pens or a spray. Now, I got my pens from Kmart. They are called the four-pack liquid chalk markers. Bloody awesome things for $9. 
four different colours, so use the marker which best offsets the bowls you or your team use. Now, uh, you can pay for sprays as well, and I'm sure your club will have some of those around. Standard pens and pencils. Now, you'll need to mark a scorecard or 100 in your time, so make sure you have working pens and pencils in your kit. Another thing you'll need is a bowls measure. Now, some clubs stock them, but mo mostly you're getting it through your local bowls shop. Now, some medical things up to you. Uh, I've got ice spray, uh, Voltaren, uh, deep heat, and of course, sunscreen. Now, last but not least, you need a stubby holder. Great for just about any excuse to keep your drink of choice cold during the summer. Mine is currently being used for my Coke, but more on that in Scotty saying segment. So, right now that I've added to that from the last episode, let's get on to the warm-up drills. Now, one of the eye-opening things I got taught during my club coach course was based around warm-ups. Now, when I first started playing properly, I had this pink little card that used to sit in my wallet. Now, it was a training card which had about 15 drills from warm-ups all the way through to driving drills. Now, unfortunately, I lost that card over time, um, but as at the time itself, it was brilliant to use. I'm now trying to work out what drills and what at what time are needed to improve my game. But after forgetting what was on the card, I totally forgot to worry about warm-ups. Now, I've noticed about 95% of players don't do warm-ups of any sort. Most people hit the green, practice and or play games without any warm-ups whatsoever. Now, do footballers, soccer players, rugby players, literally any athlete start their games without warm-ups? Now, that is a pretty easy answer of no, isn't it? So, why do we, as lawn bowlers, think we can just go out onto the green without any form of warm-up? Now, I have personally stopped thinking that way and have four to five quick and easy drills to show you to get the body and muscles all warmed up whilst also getting your line and weight of the green. Now these drills should take you no longer than say 20 minutes and I personally do them before every game and every practice and have found I can hit the green running a lot quicker than most. Now one of the blokes from Baronia uh, I was talking to last week uh, and he said to me, mate, it always takes me two or three ends to get my line. Now my reply was pretty simple. Do the drills I'm about to show you and you'll have your line before anybody else even starts roll-ups. And that's true. So let's get cracking with our first. The first thing you should do is some stretching, some hamstrings, quads, hip flexors are good as well as doing some shoulder rotations. Now our first drill adds to those stretches. It's an easy drill just to get all your joints and muscles going. Now the mat, as it is, should be two metres from the tee facing the ditch. What the hell are you talking about, Matt? Well, what, we're going to bowl into the ditch? Are you mad? Well, yeah, pretty much, but I also am not silly. So put your discs about one metre. You don't have to use discs, but if you do, put them one metre either side of the tee line on the, off the middle line. What we're going to do is four bowls on the forehand into the ditch, now you must go over your line or the discs, especially that's why they're good. So next we're gonna do four on the backhand, four on the forehand again, and four more on the backhand. Now the idea is to be gentle, get your form correct and get those muscles moving. So let's get into it. So as you can see, it's meant to be nice and gentle. So just go and get your bowls, take them back to the mat, or throw them back as I just did. And we do four on the backhand. So, that's the first drill done. The second drill continues on from that warm up while finding your line. Now the mat goes on the tee, 
the discs should be lined up round about where you think your line is. Now the jack is about double the space between your discs and where the jack ends up. It's about five metres out uh, for Baronia because the line is about five metres out. So uh, it's pretty simple to wo work out. Uh, the drill is pretty simple. Now starting with your forehand, you want to roll the bowl gently over the disc and see if it ends up dead smack in the middle of the line. Now, if it doesn't, adjust the disc to where it goes. Now, maybe do this four to six times until your line is spot on. Do the same on your backhand, all right? Now, once you have your discs lined up exactly where you think they need to be, what you do is you stand on the map, uh, on the mat and use the discs as your reference. So that's your line. So within the space of a minute or two, you've got your line for the green on that day, basically. Even if you don't want to do the previous drill, this is pretty much a must do, especially if you're playing away from your home. So uh, even if you're not, the line changes depending on the day and the conditions as well. So this is the drill and this is how it goes. All right, so that one was a bit too quick. Let's just slow it right down. Bit too quick again. All right, straight over the top of the disc there. And as you can see, that's pretty much dead in line. And that's what we're trying to achieve there. Straight over the top of the disc. So I know that on my forehand is correct. Straight over the top of the disc on the backhand. <coughs> and we can see it's shallow. So what we do, and this is the whole objective and the whole idea, move the disc in because we know the backhand's a little bit shallower. All right, so let's try the backhand again. Straight over the top of the disc. And as you can see, we've almost ended up on the line, but we need to come in a little bit more. Now granted, again today, the wind is up a bit, so again, conditions are different. Normally where I had the disc would be my line, but today with the wind and the crosswinds, I've got to bring it in a bit more. See, I was outside the disc then, and I'm gonna finish up that far off line. So let's see if we can't do it again. All right, so we know we're pretty much spot on. So that's the second drill done. The third drill is all about weight control and slide adjustments. Now, remove your discs and the jack uh, from the previous one. Now, this drill is called leapfrog or hopscotch or whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, you're putting down four bowls and each bowl must beat the previous one. Now, you don't need to ditch the bowl. You don't need to be long. We're looking at about halfway or 15 to 18 meters. Now, the weight adjustment can be what you want it to be, but I'm not aiming, or well now I'm aiming for about half a metre of weight more than my last when I do this drill. So let's have a look. So again, this drill is all about weight variation, weight control. Righto, so my first one's gone down about halfway. Welcome to live television. I haven't got anywhere. Oh, might have got that one. No, that's a little bit short, but as you can see, I'm only trying to do about half a metre on my last, which is not always easy. That one's a little bit heavier. That's probably gonna crash into the front too, but you get the idea. So basically that's what we're trying to do. So do a couple on your forehand, couple on your backhand, and you're done. Let's move on to the last two.
The last two warm-up drills are standard practice drills, but I use them if I'm playing as part of my warm-up. Now, they are both weight-related drills. Now, the first is follow the jack drill. This drill is a standard drill that a lot of people use, but I've tweaked it slightly, and it was something I used to practice a lot when I first started. So, the mat should be on the tee again. Basically, you roll the jack to a desired length. Just after you've rolled the jack, you then follow it up with a bowl before the jack finishes. So the weight should be exactly the same as the jack roll. Then draw another bowl on the opposite hand to that jack. Next, you roll the, another jack to a shorter distance to the first and then basically repeat the process. Do that up and back. Here's how it goes. One. Righto, so the drill's pretty simple. Roll the jack, follow the jack down with your bowl, pick another bowl up and go with the forehand once both have pretty much rested. And the bowl goes after it. That's a shocking line, but anyway. But the weight was spot on, so here we go. Opposite hand. That's a little bit better. Righto, and again, so we're gonna try and roll it a bit shorter. And we follow this one down. Oh, I've got no idea with the weight on that one. <laughs> I won't do a second cut. <laughs> there we go, and the weight was a lot better on that one. So, that's the follow the jack drill. Now, the last drill for your warm up, or my roll, warm ups anyway, is the roll to the ditch drill. Now, put a jack off center and basically near the ditch. The idea for this is to draw within the T line and the ditch up the other end. It's not a drive the jack into the ditch drill, merely a straight draw drill. Now, bowl all four, four bowls on alternate hands, do that up and back as well, and we'll show you the drill now. So, as you'll see in the other shot, the jack is a couple of inches short of the ditch. Again, the idea is to try and draw without going into the ditch and without being a mile short. So, here we go. Oh, that one's well short. Now two on the backhand. <laughs> so, there we go, two decent bowls and two pretty crappy ones, but hey, we're all not perfect. Well, that's it, your warm up is done. In four to five short drills, you'll have line, you'll have length, you'll have weight adjustment, and your body will be right to go in terms of playing straight away. Now, most of the injuries I've seen happen to players happen within the first couple of ends, as A, their bodies aren't warmed up, and B, they are playing heavy shots which the body really isn't warmed up for. So, do I believe personally that it's an advantage to do these drills? I have found since, uh, since I have started doing them a few months ago that I'm basically starting their game ready to go from the get-go. Whereas others have to have a couple of roll-ups and a couple of ends and start, by, as far as I'm concerned, start behind the eight ball. Two to three quick wins at the beginning of a game can go a long way to winning overall, especially in quick games. So, you make up your own mind as to whether it's worth it or not for your game. So, that's Coach's Corner for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the things that I've taught and I hope you want to implement some of these into your game. See you next time.
This is the inaugural segment of Scotty Sayings. Now, I'm not going to give away just yet who Scotty is, uh, but some of the local bowlers will definitely know who he is. Now, I happen to have the privilege of bowling with Scotty last year in our top side. Now, I've always thought Scotty was a great bloke, loves to have a beer and really cares about the game of bowls. But a little did I know what a deep thinker this man is. So from time to time, I got pulled aside last year by Scotty and asked, hey, Matty, I was thinking the other night, blah, 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 blah. And out comes this thought from way outside of left field. So we're going to explore some of those for our viewers and Scotty himself. Now, first up, Scotty texted me a couple of weeks ago and said, yeah, g'day, mate. Uh, did you know that peanuts float in regular Coke and sink in Diet Coke? Now, as you can see, that really is left field thinking, but nothing uncommon for, for Scotty himself. So, to prove the theory now wrong, I have a glass of Coke and I have a glass of Diet Coke, and I put peanuts in both probably five minutes ago. Now, I had this spiel all set up as to why peanuts float in Coke and peanuts don't float in Diet Coke. Did all this research, scripted it up, but guess what, Scotty? You've completely stuffed me segment up. So as you can see, peanuts float in both. So I'm buggered if I know what I'm gonna do. Uh, Scotty, you're gonna have to come in and answer, answer for yourself on this one. Um, so, with that in mind, uh, let's get on to our next segment, Bar Bullshit. Now, this was pre-taped last night, and I can tell you, it's an absolute cracker. So enjoy. G'day and welcome to the first rendition of Bar Bulls Hit. Now I'm joined here today by two of the loudest, most obnoxious blokes at the Baronia Bowls Club. I don't have to agree that's with that. A, that's disgusting. I'd have to agree with that. Bruce McFadgen and Sam Tricky. How are you boys? Good, thank you mate. How are you? Good, good thanks. Not bad. How'd you go today? Very good. How'd you go Bruce? You bowl alright or? Yeah, in the second. Second game? Game we bowled very well. Useless in the first? No, no, no. Just bad. Sammy, how'd you, you go? Are you all right, mate? You look like you, you know, you're going to choke up there. <laughs> Maybe cheer up or something. No, no, I, I did all right today. You know, yeah. I enjoyed it. Yep. Enjoyed the bowl. Uh, the green's a bit slow, but good fun. No, well, it is winter. What do you expect? Well, exactly right. Exactly right. So, uh, look, we're just having a casual talk today. Um, the first thing I wanted to know is uh, what's your bowl's history? Bruce, we'll start with you. Well, How did it all start? Well, I was going to join Ferntree Gully to start off with, but then you talked me into coming here. Yep. And uh, that's about it. I got into a lot of trouble for that too, you know that. <laughs> did you? Yeah, I did. Oh, boy. Yeah, borrowing the bowls and kept oh, them yeah. in my boot for two weeks. Yeah, I know. So, I know. So they took the key off you. So how many, so what, how many years you been bowling out? Two? Two. Two? Yeah. Enjoying it? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm the second best bowler in the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because well, I must be because well, everybody else thinks they're the first best. So. That, that is that is his nickname. One so of his, one of his nicknames is Two B. Two B now, yeah. Second best bowler in the club. So, Sammy, what's your history in lawn bowling? Well, I'm the best bowler in the club. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Everyone else thinks they're the best, so I must be second best. Uh, look, I've been bowling about <coughs> thirteen years thereabouts. Not too sure. Yeah. Um, started it up because I was bored sitting at home, fell in love with the game, and, and it's a great game, great people. Um, yeah, Thanks, it's all Sam. good, it's all plus. So what about 10 years now? 10 years of bowling? Yeah. No, I said 13, yeah. mate. 13, sorry, I don't listen. <laughs> Bit, <laughs> getting deaf in me old age. Yeah. Just, I want to ask you one question, what's my best side? This side oh, or that definitely side? Definitely not that side. No. no. Your back side. Well, I could make it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. I'm glad you said that. So what uh, what gravitated you towards bowls, Bruce, to start with? Oh, well, I retired and I just th sort of thought I'd like to have a go at it. I used to watch my dad down at Rosebud just about every weekend bowling. And uh, I, I was thought... told another story, actually, that his wife said to him, she's got no, he's got no <laughs> friends, he needs to meet people. But I could, be, I could have been told. Well, he had, he had me as a mate yeah. to start with. Whereas, I've got plenty of friends. I don't need any friends. <laughs> so what? 
<laughs> this is going well for a first episode. Yeah, yeah. Actually, oh, yeah. this is this is kind of what Bruce I imagined. One of my and best mates down at Bowling Club. Stewie Cripps is my best mate. Bruce is my second best he's, mate. So he's two way, two B again. By the way, Matt, you're second. probably my tenth best mate. Yeah, well, that might be second best mate. Yeah, he's second best bowler, yeah, second best mate. Yeah. yeah. So you're two B on a number of uh, areas. Yeah. So yeah, what? But I'm one B. No, I, the record. So what gravitated to you? Uh, gravitated you towards bowl, Sammy. Um, needed something to fill in a Saturday afternoon. Sick and tired of, you know, basically sit around and crack oh, a stubby. You were any good, so. <laughs> <laughs> a stubby. No, I no. had a crack at it and I just fell in love with the game. It's yeah. a great game. Yeah. It's a great leveler. Anybody, any age, any yeah. sex can play the game. Male, female, yeah. 90, odd to 12, 8. Well, a, and that's what I said in the first episode, yeah. down at Bronia, we've got people, uh, you know, Peter uh, Stiff's in his 90s, Freddie's in his 90s, Young um, Levi's, Levi's 8, I think eight now, old, yeah. um, Logan today, who is bowling, he's 12, 13, sorry Logan, yeah. I, I don't good. know your age, Logan's but good. He's going um, to be a good 14, bowler. 14, yeah. there we go, so, yeah. he's going to be a good bowler, and Wayne today, his first game, first game, that's yeah, it, and uh, he Wayne. bowled really well, he did well. Well, yeah. So, so that's pretty much pretty much what keeps you involved in bowls, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Well, it's, oh, yeah. it's good fun. Like you, you can great put, game. Put a bit of shit on everybody and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, you know, get away with it. Because you, know. you two are no good at that putting shit on anyone. Oh no, oh, we'd no. never do that. No, no, we'd do that. Shit on each other all the time. <laughs> <laughs> very, very along, quiet. along with me, you know, because I don't. Yeah, but you're an easy target, Matt. I am very easy, actually. Easy target. So um, you think you're a great bowler, but you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the kind of stuff I get all the time. Thank God I've got thick skin. Is all Ooh, I can say. This sort of stuff happens uh, to everybody. It does, and that's that's yeah. that's the idea yeah. of mateship and and camaraderie around a club is that you know who you can and can can't really hang crap on and have a bit of fun with. And yeah, it's good. It's it's the same, I suppose, with any footy club, cricket club, any kind of club. Uh, you know where and who you can. Yeah, well, you've always got to have well, some, somebody. Some like it, some don't. But and this is Gary. Gary Overs Gary in the background. Yes, I'm the barman. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the most popular person at the yeah. club. Now, <laughs> yeah, Gary Overs, you've got your name up on the champions list up there. Yes, You're I'm a club champion, former club champion. One time, two time. No, just the one. Just the one. Yeah. Well, you only need to snag the one, don't you? Do you know they used to call Gary Overs Rowdy? No. Rowdy, yeah. Rowdy? Rowdy. His original nickname was Rowdy. Why? And I was responsible for tagging him with G.O. Well, it's pretty obvious. He must be, yeah. he's he's be getting his, called Rowdy. He must be getting his wages out now. <laughs> now the wages out of the till. Now, you two are the biggest <laughs> protagonists in the club, I would say. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's Scotty, that. Scotty's probably close. He's a bit quieter in the way he delivers his yeah. shit hanging, let's put it. Why is that? Why are you two the biggest protagonists around? Don't know. I think it's because of Sam. He started it and I just finish it. You yeah. just keep trying to finish it. Yeah. And it just never finishes. Yeah, no. well, that's He's about never going to get one He's up uh, on me. <laughs> He's never going to get one up on me, mate. I'll always I have the last word. I don't want to get one up on you, that's for sure. Keep it clean. Thank you. Now, how do you guys feel about the upcoming season? Unfortunately for Bronia, we've been delegated down to Division 4. Here we're on. we're oh. really not a Division 4 side, but how do you guys see the upcoming season? You know, going. Where do you see the club going in terms of all of that kind of stuff? Fortunately, we've dropped a division four, so that's a bad sign to begin with, isn't it? I just yeah. said that, Gary. Oh, did you? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, yeah. shut up. In other words, Gio, shut up. I'm but you see, um, it's out of our control, isn't it? Yeah, it is oh, what I mean, it is. Being relegated, definitely. Yeah. It's it's something bowls it Victoria are done. Just got to get on our bike and away we go. Because we, well. as far as I see it, we're definitely not a Division Four. No, we shouldn't be down there. No, no. But well, that means you never know. We might end up winning something this year. Then. Well, knuckle down and let's yeah. do it. I we'll reckon. Division Three. So yeah. We should be. Well, All right. So last question. <laughs> Excuse me. 
All right, last question for you two. Seeing as you are really good mates. Brucey, I'll start oh, with you. Okay. Really Brucey, I'll start with you. Uh, sum Sammy up in one or two words. I'm not allowed to swear, am I? <laughs> yeah, you can. You can swear your ass off. I don't. I don't are, care. Mate? No, I think Sam's. No, one or two words, Bruce. Not a sentence. Very genuine. <laughs> that's that's that's. Mate, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. <laughs> There's a soft side to Bruce that we haven't seen, but very genuine. Please, please God forgive me for lying. <laughs> Sammy, back at him. Brucey, very genuine guy, and he's a funny man. That, that was a <laughs> sentence. No, a sum him man. up in one or two. Funny man. There we go. All right. Well, that was the first iteration of Bar Bulls Hit. Um, Bulls. Hopefully we'll... Bulls Hit. No, what? Bulls Hit. Bulls Hit, I didn't right. think. Oh, you're going to call it bull pit. Bulls hit because oh, I didn't think bullshit was appropriate. Right, right, right. Sam, see, I'm trying king. to be trying to be clean here. Not the king's wood. Not the king's wood. Oh, that's bull pit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not the king's wood. That was what was his name? It was dead Ted bull pit. Ted, Ted bull pit. Yeah, that's it. No, that's an old joke. So there we go. That ends episode two of Matt Jackson Balls. Hopefully, you guys tune in next time where we'll have our pretty much regular segments. I'll be down at Mitcham interviewing a few blokes from there. So see you next time. Good bowling. Cheers. Hello, little dude. Hello, buddy. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the first it's not the first episode. It's not the first episode. It's the second. Jeez. Glass of diet coke. So let's try this experiment and see what happens. As you can see, I've got Nobby's nuts as well. They're the peanuts. So let's go. Well, Scotty, that kind of stuffs that theory. <laughs>